Hi, my name is Sandy Ramsey, and I have had the privilege of being the Executive Director at Cornerstone Community Outreach for about 30 years. This story that I'm about to read to you is uh, a slice of life of the holiday season during um, about 2008. Uh, it's not uh, due to COVID, it will look different this year, but uh, it is a slice of life of how we normally celebrate the holidays at our shelter. And I just wanted to share it with you because it's very encouraging and I feel very blessed to have been able to uh, live through it. It's a wonder-filled life. Our holiday season opens with a homeless man appearing in our lobby who looks like Santa Claus he disappears before we can figure out how to help him. Is even Santa Claus falling on hard times? The weather outside is frightful. It's erratic and severe, causing Cornerstone Community Outreach to go into emergency response mode. That means even though our bed spaces are full, we will continue to take in anyone from the cold and find a place for them. The no room at the inn sign does not hang here. Back and forth on Clifton, Staff and residents alike make their way between our two buildings. No one really dashes through the snow. It's more like plod, slosh, and stumble as the wind whips. The first holiday dinner is served by one of CCO's faithful volunteer groups. Turkey and all the trimmings are eaten and gifts passed out. There is a Christmas concert in our dining room. Beautiful music to soothe and encourage. Although visions of sugar plums probably don't dance in the heads of the homeless, our families begin to see that they too can celebrate this holiday season. Because of the weather, our aging drain pipes decide to give out under our dining room floor where we serve food to hundreds of people every day. Flood water threatens our kitchen. Quick plans are made with our long suffering plumbers Jackhammering the dining room floor begins two days before Christmas. The giant fake Christmas tree, middle lights out, garland askew, stands watch over the men as they work. Meanwhile, our team of elves are sorting and tagging, wrapping and bagging hundreds of toys and gifts. Will there be enough for everyone? Will the bad economy take its toll? Will our many faithful contributors and volunteers understandably hold back this year? Not here, not with our friends. I take a few minutes to talk to a man and woman who have been sleeping on the loading dock behind the tire store. For some people, there is never room at the inn. I tell them to send word to the others living on the dock to come in from the cold. We will make a space for them. Another Christmas concert is played out right over the plywood that now covers the drain pipes in the dining room. This concert features a wide variety of musical acts. Our residents are treated to everything from step dancing to blues to traditional Christmas songs. And where else could you see a goth band perform the werewolf's Christmas? Some dance, some clap, all eat Christmas cookies. It is a time of relaxing and rejoicing while yet another snowstorm swirls about outside. A Christmas wreath arrives from a local agency. Two hours earlier, they held a memorial service to honor the homeless who died in the last year. We display the wreath for a few days, contemplating the sadness that it represents. Then it ends up in the home of one of our formerly homeless friends, where it retains its original purpose of promoting holiday cheer. A couple comes in with beautiful handmade Raggedy Ann's. A woman donates money in gratitude for finally finding her lost sister in our single women's program. Toys for Tots pull up with bags of toys. Our team of elves hand gifts out to our homeless families. Comments of delight and amazement fill our ears. Meanwhile, back outside, we all continue to stumble over the snow, which has now hardened into deep icy ruts. A white Christmas is not all it's cracked up to be. It is difficult for everyone to navigate back and forth between our buildings. We're on a side street and we'll be the last to get plowed. 
Not to worry, I get lessons from my less fortunate brothers and sisters who take this weather in stride and continue to cheerfully haul supplies back and forth, take out the garbage, holding the doors and helping little kids and the elderly. Images of Whoville come to my mind. They live the struggle of life every day. I am thankful that even on this tucked away, snow-choked street, the holiday season has arrived for the homeless too. Another festive feast, and then another. At the height of the severest weather, a group comes through the frigid air and swirling snow to prepare and serve Italian beef. I am profoundly humbled and thankful that these volunteers, who could easily call off their visit, plow through and arrive just like the Comcast man. Everyone enjoys another wonderful holiday meal. At the end of this night, when all is bitterly cold, what appears in my sight is not eight tiny reindeer, but eight little children with mom and dad being dropped off by the Chicago Department of Family and Support Services. Somehow their plans to be in Texas for the holidays are thwarted and they will be spend Christmas with us. Not missing a beat, the elves make up bags of presents for them, drawing again from the den generous donations of so many people. Johnny, a former client in a wheelchair, is on the phone to us. He too slept on the loading dock before coming to CCO. Deteriorating health sent him to the hospital, but he recovered enough to go to a nursing home. Not to be overlooked at Christmas, Johnny is now calling us to please deliver snacks to him. Again, from our plentiful donations, my husband loads up snacks and extra clothing for Johnny and a couple of other folks we know in the home. Next, some volunteers let us know that shelter on the other side of, of the city is short on food. Back in the van, my husband drops off surplus food to them because we can. Another family arrives on our doorstep from the Department of Family and Support Services. We take them in and help them get settled. Their teenage son suffers from autism and the changes going on around him are very difficult for him to handle. We hear they have a dog that helps the boy settle. Can we house the homeless dog too? Yes, we can. On Christmas Eve, as we're finishing up last minute details, someone points out an elderly man sitting in our lobby. Putting my innkeeper hat on again, I talk with him as he sits on a chair with a walker in front of him. To say that he reminds me of the babe in the manger is really a stretch of a Christmas analogy. I think it is his look of utter helplessness as he hangs on to the walker. How long has he been here? How did he get here? Who has sent him and what can we do for him? Hardly able to talk due to pain, he states that he lives on the streets. He just wants to go to the hospital where he can get his ankle fixed and find a chair to sleep in. He fell an hour earlier out in the snow and broke his ankle. A bone was protruding and he was bleeding. Other street people referred him to Cornerstone, and one person actually donated their walker to him right in the street, since he was obviously worse off than they were. I could only hope I would have been that unselfish. We call the ambulance and send him off, knowing that his Christmas has just been upgraded from the streets to the hospital. All in the same holiday season, the weather changes abruptly. The snow melts and it begins to rain. Up on the rooftop, drip, drip, drip. Again, no reindeer here, but a team of us join together to sweep several inches of water down a drain to slow the leaking. Miracle roofers appear and seal up enough holes to take us through the holiday. Extra food, extra volunteers. Water from beneath, water from above, drilling dust and swirling snow. The star continues to guide needy people to our doorstep. Our neighbor requests prayer for his store clerk. The compactor sticks. Tables shift to accommodate more festive dinners and treats. Bags of donation coats come in. People shop through them. Life happens here in this harbor from the elements. Loneliness stops at these doors. The holiday celebration of the poor and needy. Good conversations, good advice, good support. Silent night. Holy night, all is calm, all is right.